100 points. In order to pass, you must get 60%. Oh. Greater or equal to 60 points. If you come within 55 to 60, you would also pass. If you, get, if you do not pass, I think don't waste your time going and checking the paper. It's a hopeless case. Don't waste your time looking at it. You don't pass if you are only hopeless. Try again. The fourth question is question number one is on profitability. Profitability company. If you break it up here, it means management ability to use investor capital. This is capital, investor money to generate profit. So this is the input. This is the output over a period of time. That time is 2011. You will have annual data. Okay. Okay. Here is a person that is called team of our CEO who represents the management team. They manage this money on behalf of the investors. So we want to test their managerial ability to use this money to generate profit for the investors. That's the idea of profitability. I want you to learn how to calculate Return on investment, return on equity. Maximum interest rate and financial leverage effect. This time you will not have the computer. So you have to bring a big calculator, like the, like the calculator in the gold shops. When I say a big calculator means a calculator that has at least 12 digits, can enter at least 12 digits. The numbers are big. Based upon which is class in mind. There's no more mathematics. You only need the four cosmic uh, operations class, mind, multiplication, and subtraction. So these reports will be given, and then you will be asked to analyze and evaluate the profitability of the company. The 
record, I give you the correct symbol, record. Do not confuse, in every exam, I see some students who confuse between death, they confuse death with liability. They are related, but they are not the same. It's like saying Thailand and Bangkok. This is like Bangkok and this is Thailand. Which means this is a broader concept. These two are not equal, they are not the same. Liability has operating liability and financial liability. When we say financial liability, that's what we mean by debt. So debt is part of the total liability. Operating liabilities are non-interest bearing liabilities. Non-interest bearing liabilities. There's no interest in it. But for debt, we have to pay interest. So what do we mean by operating liability? Operating liability is any money the company owes to the customers, suppliers, non-interest, employees, and government. Any money that the company owes to customers, for example, in the airline business, the customers will pay to buy the ticket. So until they get the service, it's a liability to the company. It's a prepaid amount. Suppliers, sometimes the company buys goods from the supplier on credit, like trade accounts fail. Customers, suppliers, employees, and government. Government means tax. Tax payments. Government means tax. Now, when we say that we do not include this, what are these? Like, Customer deposit, trade accounts payable, accrued expenses, and any kind of tax, like tax payable, finding added tax, anything about tax we do not include, that's already liable. So what are these? This is money owing to the bank. Money they borrow from the bank or from the bondholders if they issue bonds. Any money owed to these groups is what we call financial liability. Uh, an example of that would be a loan. You will see the word loan. You will see the word lease. Uh, you will see the word borrowing. Okay. You will see the word trust to receive. It's very basic. You will see the word loan. Look for the word low and lease. Low and lease. In the liability section, current liability and non current liability. And that is what we call debt. This is what I mean by debt. The financial liability. Liability only is on a contract and a borrowing. Interest bearing debt. Now this one we can see from the balance sheet, it is the total equity. You will see the word total equity. So this is what you will have when. How will you have when? Return on investment. It's total. Profit divided by total capital. This is 
output divided by input over a period of time is what you get as a percentage of what you invest. Look at it from the investor side. The percentage of, of the money they earn. And because we have two groups of investors, then this is the profit to total of them. You start with this one. This is debt plus equity. That's the total capital. For the owner, they will get the net profit or net income plus debt holder will get interest. It's their profit is interest. easier to remember when you look at it from the investor side. Owner, this is the profit for the owner, and this is the profit for the lender, from the lender side. Interest, and then, if you look at, remember the income statement, this is after tax, but this is before tax. You look at the location of the income statement, so we cannot add something before tax to something after tax. It's like adding Thai bar and US dollar. We cannot do that. We have to change, and then we change this one to make it after tax, then we add multiply by one minus average tax rate. Make the interest after tax. Multiply the interest by one minus the average tax rate. This return, this profit return will be on after tax basis. On after tax basis. It is output divided by input from investor point of view, from the providers of the capital point of view. Let's reflect on that. I said you would have the income statement, you would have the balance sheet. So imagine where can you get these numbers? You need four numbers. One, two, three, and these two. Four and five. You need five numbers. Everything I mentioned here tonight, you have to do it on that Sunday, on the exam. So ask me now if you have any doubts. Try to imagine if you have this, where can you get these numbers? 
please take a note one thing. Sometimes, on the income statement, this number may be given as a negative number. Because it is an expense tax they have to pay, so the company will be back. So it may be given as a negative number. Ignore the negative number, you just take the number. Or if you take that number and multiply by 0 0.1, that number should be a positive number. Even as a negative number, because the tax is an expense, so it may be as a negative number, if that is the case, then you have to change it to positive. Profit before tax. Supposed to add point four six. The question is: Is this good profit? Is it high profit? Is it low profit? Is it good? Is it bad? You have to make a judgment. That's what I mean when I say, "What do you think about it?" You need to calculate first, and then you evaluate. How do you do that? Everybody understands this. It is every 100 bar of investor money. Like you are the investor, I'm the actor. You give me your money, every 100 bar. This money is not for free. I use that money in one year and I can rent to add bar. Will this make you happy or not? You need to look at the cost of that money. We call it WSEC. Weighted average cost of capital. What is the cost of that money? What is the required rate of return of the investor? Investor expectation. WSC shows investors' expectation. What they expect or what they require for their money. Investors' expectation. This number will be given. We will not calculate that. It will be given. Suppose I say the WACC of the company is 11%. Then I want to you have to always interpret in terms of output and input. That's 11 over 100. Meaning everyone has, this is the same 100 baht here. Every 100 baht they gave to this company, they expected, they required to get 11 baht profit. Okay. When they give that money, that's their expectation at the beginning of the year. They expected 11 percent. And what did the company provide actually? What is the actual return? to 
Is the investor dissatisfied or dissatisfied? If they say the property is good or bad, it's good. They don't say this property is good. So that can be answered that question. That can be answered. Right? That's understanding it. But in simple terms, in order to evaluate, this is the evaluation criteria. Evaluation criteria. You compare return on investment percentage with the WACC percentage. And if ROI, which is what the company provides, is greater than the WACC, then profitability is good. Greater or at least equal. Investor is dissatisfied. If this is less than this, profitability is low. Is it correct if I do this? I have seen some students will do this. 1 minus 0 0.4 is 0 0.6. Uh. And then they will say 16 multiplied by 0 0.6. Oi. Uh, 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 Add this try. one to this one and then multiply. No. I don't do it that. And I Sam see that I write on the paper back to high school. <laughs> 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 10 and then 6, you do this part first. Mm. Multiplication first. 13.6. Right, so you multiply by this first 3.6 and then you want to say 3.3. You multiply this one first and after that you add. Okay. Multiply that and after that you add. Please don't forget it. Every test I see that. Okay. Now, This 
I investment means total investment, which is the same as total capital. Total investment is equal to total capital. That's why in the denominator we use debt plus equity in the denominator. Total investment or total capital, which is the debt plus equity. Now, when we move from ROI and come down to ROE, return on equity, we have to consider only equity capital, equity input, equity profit. All right, equity. What does that mean? You start with this formula, you ignore this one, exclude the debt, and exclude this part. Therefore, your return on equity will be net profit divided by total equity. Because here we are specifically focused on equity, then we remove, we remove, we exclude anything related to debt. And that is the debt capital and the profit for the debt. Interest and the tax, cut out that part, anything that's related to debt. Then the formula comes down to net profit divided by equity. Same data, same numbers. It is much easier. Same number you use it here, divided by the same number you use it here, balance sheet. All of them come from the balance sheet. We use book values. So normally, if this is 12.46, it will be higher. Suppose 16.5% it will be higher. ROE will normally be greater than for a profitable company. Okay. ROE, ROE would be greater than ROI. Because you remove a big number from the denominator, that will increase the duration. The meaning is the same style. How would you interpret? Interpretation is the same, 16.5 divided by 100. Every 100 bag of shareholders' capital, equity, every 100 bag of, now we exclude this one, every 100 bag of owner equity, company generated 16.5 bag profit. Is it good? Is it bad? To answer that question, you have to compare the return on equity with the cost of equity. K E. E for equity, here also E for equity. And this number would be given. Suppose if this is 15%, it will be given. Okay. 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 It's key free lane. KE is cost of equity. Cost of equity. Cost of equity. Cost of equity. This one is cost of equity. That is the shareholder expectation. It shows shareholder expectation. What they expect to get on their money. Or shareholder required. We use the term cost because we think from the company side. That's how you do it. This FLE 
stands for financial leverage effect. Financial leverage effect. And financial leverage effect shows a gain on debt financing. The gain on borrowing money. If this number is a positive number, it shows that the decision to borrow money was good for the company and the shareholders. Positive effect on the problem. So if the number is a positive number, it shows the company's borrowing decision generated benefit for the shareholders. It was good. They benefited. They have a leverage effect. Positive effect. So I said, if the number is a positive number, it shows that the company's decision to borrow money benefited the shareholders. It was good for the shareholders. If it is negative or zero, it's bad. Now, how do we calculate this one? We say R of E percentage minus R of I percentage. According to the hypothetical numbers we use it, R of E is 60.5 percent, R of I is about 20.46. This is approximately four percent. Approximately four percent. Three point nine four percent. Three point nine four percent. Approximately four percent. Now. I will not ask to calculate financial level. I will ask you that question. Something like, was borrowing good or bad for the company shareholders? Is leverage good or bad for the company shareholders? How do you know? You calculate this. You see this one is positive. In other words, if R of E is greater than R of I, we will get a positive number, so it's good. Owner has extra profit of 4%. That is because they are making money from the debt. They borrow at low rate and they invest at in higher rate. If ROE is less than ROI, that means FLE is a negative number, then borrow is bad. Bad for who? Bad for the shareholders. What is the maximum interest rate? Something 
pain. The last item was that this one max high. See if the data shows borrowing is good, so if borrowing is good, one way to maximize the profit is to leverage more, to take more debt. And therefore, we need to ask what is the maximum interest rate they can take. This is called the max I equals to return on investment in percentage divided by one minus the tax rate. T for tax rate. Return on investment divided by one minus the tax rate. Please note that this T tax rate is the same as this T average tax rate, which you have right here. The same average tax. So this T is actually average tax rate. Same as that. Same number. You get a number, you make a percentage, you get something like 16%, or some number. And the maximum interest rate the company can afford to pay without loss. This is the maximum they can pay on their debt without loss. Now we have to we have to understand each other. I will not say in the exam what is the max I. What will I say? I tell you a hypothetical story. I tell you a company can borrow money from the bank and the bank will charge them 12% interest. They apply a loan and the bank accepts the loan on condition they charge 12% per year. Should they accept them? Should they accept them? That is, if this is too high, can they pay 12% or not? And how to answer that question is, first, you must have this one first. Calculate the max side, and then you compare this one with it. This is what they can afford to pay. This is the offering rate. This is what they offer it to pay. Then, the rest is common sense. The rest is common sense. What is the answer in this case? Should they borrow? Yes. yes, they should borrow. They should borrow as long as the offering rate is lower than the max high, they can accept that offer. They can pay. But if the offer rate is higher than the max rate, they should not accept because they will have a loss. They cannot afford, the business cannot afford to pay.
profit before tax is also on the income statement. Every number you need on the numerator comes from the income statement. Only the number at the denominator comes from the balance sheet.